James Buchanan is the, in my opinion, uh, the finest living economist today. He'll be remembered, I suppose, as a bit of a maverick, uh, but as, as a very insightful and productive maverick. He's a fantastic teacher, uh, very encouraging to students. Um, you know, I, just, I can't say enough about how great he is. Born and raised in rural Tennessee, James Buchanan may not seem a likely candidate to become one of the most influential economists of the last 50 years. However, it was his early life experiences, during particularly challenging times, which would come to define his character in and out of academia. Coming of age on the Tennessee farm, Buchanan developed a strong work ethic. Buchanan has said over the years that he never lost the habit of starting early in the morning and doing his best work before his colleagues even arrived for the day. You know, Buchanan's great genius is to convince people that it's all about hard work. But he just, he thinks better than anyone else. And he works hard. So it's kind of like he's like a Michael Jordan type, right? Where, you know, he has a great work ethic and he's brilliant. I think a key to understanding Buchanan is just to understand how he works. Every morning he gets up quite early and he starts working quite early and he's very regular and he's very devoted to the craft of being an economist and an intellectual in a way that I think is quite unique. And that to me is the most memorable thing about him. It goes beyond any particular contribution. This notion of like how to work, how to think, how to live, uh, to take ideas very seriously and to treat them as such, and to communicate that to other people in an infectious way, I think is ultimately his greatest contribution. After graduation from Middle Tennessee State Teachers College in Murfreesboro, it seemed that economics had found Buchanan. He had several career paths before him. He was offered and accepted a fellowship at the University of Tennessee in economics because that seemed like the best option at the time. After serving in the Navy during World War II, Buchanan completed his doctorate at the University of Chicago under the tutelage of Frank Knight. Buchanan, to this day, regards Knight as one of his greatest intellectual and personal role models. It was also at the University of Chicago where, by chance, Buchanan would stumble upon Newt Vixell's 1896 dissertation. This chance encounter would change his economic perspective indelibly. Even though Buchanan's foray into economics was literally by chance, he quickly made a name for himself. At the University of Virginia, he was joined by other young, inquisitive economists, most notably Warren Nutter, Gordon Tullock, Jeffrey Brennan, and Leland Yeager. Buchanan and his colleagues established the Thomas Jefferson Center in an attempt to bring the study of economics back to its classical origins. These classical origins, combined with the political and economic philosophies of America's founding fathers, manifest themselves most significantly in Buchanan and Tullock's The Calculus of Consent, the book that establishes Buchanan's biggest contribution to economics, public choice theory. Radical yet simple, unromantic yet reflecting the human emotional experience, public choice theory redefined our understanding of politicians and economics. Public choice theory, as Jim Buchanan famously explains it, is uh, uh, politics without romance, or it's looking at politics uh, in a non-romantic way. Uh, so often, uh, particularly in democratic countries, we tend to look at, 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 at government in kind of a romantic way with rose-colored glasses. Like, oh, well, you know, you have these public servants out there, and they wake up every morning, and they wipe the sleepers from their eyes, and they think, what can we do to, to, to improve the world today? And Jim Buchanan says, uh, look, we don't make that kind of assumption about people op operating in the private market. We don't assume that stockbrokers wake up every morning and think, well, what can I do for the world today? They want to go up and make a, make a living. Same thing with, with, with you know, bagel bakers and college professors. But we make different assumptions about government employees. And Jim Buchanan said, let's be consistent. Let's make the same realistic assumptions about people working in the public sector that we make about people working in the private sector. It really forces us to have what you would call a behavioral symmetry. The, the attitudes and behaviors that people face in the marketplace 
those same assumptions that we make about them in the marketplace, we carry over to them in the voting booth and in the political decision process making. So you don't assume that people are greedy in the market, but then when you put them in politics, they become saintly. When I started out, people looked at you and you said a public choice, and you almost got a funny look that, what is this? This is, this is about politics. Politics is not economics, which is very strange, because if you go back to the time of the true founding fathers of economics, Adam Smith, David Hume, that's all they talked about were uh, uh, sociology, politics, and economics. They made no distinction. After leaving the University of Virginia, Buchanan would go on to teach at other notable Virginia institutions, including Virginia Polytechnic Institute, and most recently, George Mason University. In 1986, he was awarded the Alfred Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for his significant contributions to the field. Public choice theory has since become foundational in economics and has expanded within the field. Buchanan's work has pushed the uses and applications of economics, making it a more comprehensive social science. I think the thing that about Jim that, that really will be remembered and sets him apart is uh, he dares to be different. When we came from BPI up to George Mason, his motto was, let's bear, dare to be different. This, this, this was a very, very largely unknown school in the economics department. You know, they had some good economists here, but it was, it was not a well-known department. And he was going to build this department. And he said, let's not try to be like every other you know, economics department. To, to call Jim Buchanan an economist is, is really to underestimate the man. He's not just an economist. The world has lots of good economists. Jim Buchanan certainly is a good economist. He's a great economist. But he's more than that. Jim Buchanan is a, a, a we don't have a word for it, a fundamentally deep, consistent social theorist. He thinks about all the social sciences as one. In his mind, I don't really believe that they're, they're uh, separated. You know, he, th he thinks about law, he thinks about politics, about economics. All of these are, are, are uh, intertwined in Buchanan's mind. He thinks about them deeply and analytically. Buchanan is certainly one of the greats in economics. The impact of his achievements continues with each new generation of economists. What defines Buchanan is that he has always remained steadfast in his pursuit of knowledge and is never satisfied that something is complete. Buchanan remains a healthy skeptic in the most positive sense. Looking at what is and what ought to be, he is a classical thinker and a scholar's scholar, ever humble, ever persistent. Mm -hmm.